what's going on guys so this is gonna be a driving rant but it's gonna be a really good one so if you uh, if you're asking yourself if you should buy a pre-owned diesel pickup truck or I guess you could say gas or diesel pickup truck for the purpose of towing an RV or getting a trailer you probably want to watch this video first because I'm gonna give you some pointers and suggestions that might help lead you down the right path hang tight I'll be right back Okay, so this is a question that I get asked time and time again. Folks post it in the comment section, they post it on my Facebook account, my Instagram account, and they send me emails on it. They will send me specs on a specific pre-owned truck, the mileage, the tow capacity, the payload capacity, all the information they can have, and they'll ask me if I think it's a good deal, if it's a good buy. But oftentimes, the thing that I don't know is a piece of information that's probably more critical than anything else. And that piece of information is, has that truck been used for heavy towing in the past? Once you take a truck and you start using it for towing, you've moved from normal usage to severe usage. And severe usage is basically using the truck under extreme load. An extreme load doesn't mean maxing it out. It just means for the purpose of towing and specifically towing to or at capacity. Now, what I mean by that is, is if you have a, let's say right now you go out and buy a brand new 2022 Ram 3500 single rear wheel truck with the Cummins engine, high output Cummins engine, and you put 100,000 miles on that truck over a period of four years right? That's not too many per year, 25,000 miles per year, you know, on a diesel truck, that's not too bad. And then you decide to get rid of that truck. Well, if that 100,000 miles was driving all over the country for tourism reasons, and you don't necessarily tow anything, and you know, you just stop at gas stations and fill up when you can, and you don't necessarily have to worry about towing a trailer that weighs a lot behind you, well, then you're not necessarily subjecting that truck to extreme use. You are subjecting it to extreme mileage. So the normal mileage on a vehicle is like 12 to 15,000 miles a year. So if you're putting 25,000 miles a year on a pickup truck, believe it or not, whether it's your definition or not, you're putting double the amount of miles that the truck was designed, or not really designed for, but that the truck was intended for from a yearly average. 15,000 miles is generally what most people would consider to be the average amount of miles you're going to put on a vehicle per year. So if the vehicle is used for, let's say, your, your personal job and you have to take this vehicle all over the place all the time, uh, you know, my, my cousin Patrick, that's exactly what he deals with. He, uh, he has to drive that F-150 he bought all over the place. And it takes him an hour and a half to get to work. It takes him an hour and a half to get home. And he's put probably 80 to 100,000 miles on that truck in a matter of three years. So he may not feel like he's subjecting it to extreme usage, but he actually is. Now, you take a truck like that and you couple heavy towing behind it. And again, I don't mean maximum towing. I don't mean taking a F-150 or a diesel pickup truck or you know, three quarter ton, one ton, whatever, and towing at the maximum rating for payload and cargo capacity or exceeding it. I mean general towing. So let's say you haul a boat around, let's say you haul a cargo trailer or lawn equipment or whatever your profession requires you to haul around, or perhaps it's a travel trailer. That type of extra wear and tear you put on the vehicle doesn't just equate to extra wear and tear you put on the towing components, but it also wears out brakes. It also wears out your transmission. It also puts extra wear and tear on your engine as well as suspension components, things like that. So whenever you're shopping for a vehicle, you can't really just look at the mileage. You can't really just look at service records. What you should also look for are signs that the truck was used for towing. And this doesn't necessarily mean you're getting a bad truck because there's some statistic out there that like 80% of three quarter ton and one ton trucks are used for towing at some point during its life. The some point and always are two absolutely different use cases. And if you have maybe an opportunity to buy a one ton, that Ram one ton, a single rear wheel truck, maybe it has 100,000 miles on it, it's four years old. So in today's numbers, that would be like a 2018 truck, 100,000 miles on it. You know, with the way car lots and dealer lots are looking at today, you are lucky to find a truck with that low a mileage on it 
and then you find it for a good deal it looks clean it looks like it's it's been well taken care of but if you don't know if that truck's been used for towing then you don't specifically know what other components could have worn out on that truck that, that may not have worn out on another truck that wasn't used for towing. An example of that would be, again, if I use my truck predominantly for getting around, I drive to work in it, maybe because of where I work, I need a truck because you know I need to be able to haul some stuff occasionally in the bed, things like that. Well, that use case is gonna put significantly less overall wear and tear on a vehicle than if I have something hitched up to the bumper or to the bed of the truck, whether it's a conventional or fifth wheel or a gooseneck style towing situation. So what I suggest doing is if you're shopping for a used vehicle and it's a pickup truck, look for signs that it was used for towing. And I'm not gonna say these are signs that, that it's a bad truck. All I'm gonna do is say that these are signs that the truck has extra wear and tear on it that a truck that hasn't been used for towing generally wouldn't have. Some very, very easy ways of looking to see if a truck was used for towing, especially on modern day trucks, which are filling up dealership lots in the pre-owned section. You can find 2018, 2019, 2017 trucks all day long with a lot of miles on them and you're going to say well how do i identify if this truck was used for towing you can't always identify but you can look for certain things that will kind of clue you in to if the vehicle was used for towing and what type of towing so let's say it's a three-quarter ton or a one ton single rear wheel truck and you don't know if it was used for towing first of all look to see what type of tow equipment have either been added to that vehicle or were included on that vehicle look in the bed does it have the fifth wheel gooseneck prep package does it have a spot where somebody had fifth wheel rails mounted in the bed at some point is there rust and is there uh is there wear on the inside of the receiver if it's got a two inch or a two and a half inch or a three inch receiver um, underneath the bumper is there rust in there? Is there wear and tear? Did somebody leave the pin in? Um, these are all signs that the truck was used for towing and maybe just not moderate towing, but a lot of towing. Typically folks who have a gooseneck connection or a fifth wheel connection, when they use it, they probably tow with that vehicle maybe more than other people might tow with a vehicle. So by looking at some of this, you can kind of determine the life of the vehicle how it was used, not how it was driven, because you, you really don't know how the previous owner may have taken care of it from a, you know, from a driving perspective. Do they have a heavy foot? Were they an aggressive driver? Do they like taking the truck off road? You can always look under fender wells. You can always look around the engine compartment. Oftentimes that's an area that's not necessarily cleaned or detailed well by a dealership to see if there's dirt, debris, stuff that's caked in there to give you indications that that truck may have been off roaded with. You can always look underneath floor mats, underneath the carpet, underneath the truck itself. Crawl under a truck. If you're about to pay 56 $60,000 for a pre-owned vehicle, it doesn't hurt for you to get on your back slide underneath it and just see what the bottom side of it looks like. See how well it, it was maintained, if it's cleaned, if the skid plates are damaged. All of that, all of those signs that the truck may have been driven in a certain manner that you may never appreciate or you would never subject that truck to if you owned it. And then also, whenever you're looking at towing, here's the big one. Here's the one that you definitely want to pay attention to go into the vehicle when they turn it on, go into the towing menus on the vehicle. If it has it, if it's a higher trim vehicle, you're very likely gonna have towing menus. So you can actually name the trailer that you'll be towing with the truck. And if you go into it and you see that there's towing information that's saved or stored on the dash or in the computer of that vehicle that shows that it was paired up to certain types of trailers, well, then you have a pretty good idea that the truck was used for towing. Now, of course, conventional towing versus fifth wheel. In most cases, fifth wheel towing is gonna to put more wear and tear on the vehicle because it's gonna be heavier, it's gonna have more pin weight, it's gonna transfer more weight, and it's gonna provide more shock to the truck whenever you go over bumps or whenever you load it up, stuff like that. So looking for fifth wheel connections, looking for different things in the bed of the truck that would indicate that the vehicle was used to tow very heavy are signs that the truck, again, was used for towing. In a conventional situation, again, look inside the receiver, look for wear and tear there, look inside of the seven-way connector plugs, look to see if it looks like that they've been used, basically just wear and tear on those components, and then look underneath the truck to see if anybody's modified anything under there from a wiring harness perspective, especially if you get into lighter duty vehicles. Now, from a diesel versus gas perspective, there's not a lot of signs that one's gonna be better than the other, but most people generally buy diesel pickup trucks for heavier towing. So you'll have more signs that the truck was 
used for towing in that sense. Some other little indications, and none of these are absolute things, but other little indications that you can sometimes look for is if there's auxiliary power connections that have been wired into the vehicle, if there's suction cup marks on the glass in certain areas where somebody may have had some type of a TPMS system, or if there's any type of areas that kind of show somebody traveled extensively in this vehicle. And it's basically looking for a series of clues that make it add up to whether or not this truck was used for extreme situations, extreme towing, heavy type of towing. If it was a fleet vehicle, you know, believe it or not, sometimes those vehicles have never towed anything a day in their life. There's a lot of F-250, F-350 trucks that were provided to oil field type companies and they make their way around pre-owned dealership car lots that have never towed a thing in their life, but they've been subjected to crazy suspension abuse, basically going into really, really rough conditions to where the suspension is, is maxed out. And you know, that's one of those areas when you get under the truck, you start looking at skid plates, you start looking at things that can get bent and banged up. That's really want, where you want to keep an eye for that stuff because you, you don't want to get into a vehicle with an expectation that that vehicle was not subjected to extreme conditions just to find out that the thing that breaks on that vehicle is because it was subjected to those types of conditions. You don't wanna buy a pre-owned vehicle and then have regrets only because the vehicle was used in a way that you didn't know it was used. And it's not telling you that you shouldn't buy this vehicle, but it's setting the right expectations with what you should expect from a vehicle. When you buy a pre-owned vehicle, what type of things, what signs exist to show you that this vehicle's either had a very easy life or a very hard life? Most people will go in, they'll look at the carpet, they'll look at the seats, they'll look at the steering wheel, they'll look at the consoles, they'll look at things that are right in front of their face. And they'll utilize those as kind of justification for if they think a vehicle is in a great condition, if it looks like new on the inside, if it smells like new. But oftentimes they don't poke around and look at the dash computer to see if there's, again, towing screens. They don't look under the vehicle to see what type of wear and tear may exist under the vehicle because of where and how the vehicle is driven. They don't look deeper than just the surface of the engine compartment. They don't look around the side of the engine to see those little nooks and crannies that can't be sprayed out as easily, can't be cleaned out by a detailer as easily. They don't look around the dash. They don't look around areas where somebody may have used a, a spot to have house a GPS system or house a TPMS system or house equipment to see if there's signs of that as well. So you want to look for the subtleties. And again, it doesn't point to a vehicle being a bad vehicle, but it does give you a bit of history on how a vehicle could have been used. And if that use case might change how you view that vehicle. I remember there was a time when I was looking at a three quarter ton F-350 a long time ago. It was actually gonna be one of the first diesel trucks I bought. Um, and I ended up buying a couple Chevys instead, but I looked at this truck, had a brand new bed liner in the back. This truck was like 13 years old, but the bed liner was brand new. The truck looked decent. It had scratches on the outside and stuff like this. And it made me wonder, why there was a brand new bed liner in the back and not whatever was originally there. So I actually took the back end of the bed liner, I lifted it up a little bit and the bed was almost rotted out. It was rusted to pieces, but you could never tell by looking at the bed liner because it looked brand new. You could tell the truck on the outside had seen some rough times, but you certainly couldn't tell that the bed had until you looked deeper than the surface to see the signs that indicated something's going on here and something may have happened. The same thing might even be signs that the vehicle has been involved in a collision or been involved in an accident. When you look deeper than the surface and you wonder, man, every panel on this truck is beaten to hell. Why is this one panel in pristine condition? right? Or why does that grill not specifically match the year model of this truck? Why does it look a little different? Why do the headlights look too clean? Why do they look like they're new headlights on a truck that's old? Or why don't wear marks that exist on one side of the truck exist all the way through that side of the truck? Why do they stop all of a sudden at this one panel? So these are all things that you should look for when you're shopping for a pre-owned vehicle because again, they can give you those signs that the vehicle could have been involved in some type of an accident, could have been used in a certain way, or simply isn't the vehicle that you think it is. Anyways, guys, I sure hope that answers that question for a lot of you who are, who are asking me time and time again, should I buy this truck? 
you give me some information and I, there's no way I have enough information because I don't know the history, but there are things that you can do to investigate a little bit deeper than you might normally think of to really figure out if the truck that you're looking at is really the truck you think you're buying. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.